What's up YouTube? Had a bad day today as a mobile mechanic, I'll tell you what. I had to get towed home, which is one of the worst things as a mobile mechanic. You never want that. And I believe it's related to my driver CV axle. Also, recently my starter has been kind of grinding and sometimes I turn the key, absolutely nothing happens. Starter's the same starter that I bought it with like almost five years ago now. So I don't care if the starter's bad or not, I'm putting a new starter on it. I know this is, uh, you know, not something you'd normally want to do, but I'm doing it. It's my work van. I don't mind if it has a new starter. I want to get rid of this thing eventually and get something newer and lower mileage, but to be completely honest with you, I don't have a choice right now but to fix it. I got jobs lined up tomorrow, and I got to get this money, so let's get started. But first... I wanted to announce we've got some Andy's Auto merch now. We got a hat, a shirt, a sticker, a coffee mug, and even a hoodie. You can find these items listed below the video, or you can go to my channel page and you can find them under the store section. If you're interested in supporting the channel while also getting some pretty cool gear for yourself, go ahead and check those out. Now back to the video. Alright guys, so we got it taken off. The wheel got it all jacked up and everything that's kind of what it looks like here on the driver's side and uh, it looks like my outer joint is what broke it's got some in and out play and a lot of up and down slash side to side play that's very very bad so that's what happened happened in the Dutch Bros parking lot I stopped to get me a coffee and uh, literally in the drive-through this thing decided to break on me so we're gonna go ahead and start getting this taken apart um, I've always done this before by taking out the strut bolts and uh, either the tie rod end over here or the caliper but um, I'm going to look on Mitchell and see what they recommend because sometimes you take the ball joint off on the bottom and I may end up doing that just because I don't want to have to get an alignment after. I've had to get more than plenty of alignments on this thing so I really don't want to have to do that. Let me take a look and see. We may end up just going the route that I know that's easy though so stay tuned. Alright so I looked into it and uh this lower ball joint nut right there doesn't look the easiest to get to with the axle right above it. So I'm just going to go ahead and go the way that I've always done it. We're going to pop off the tie rod. We're going to take this cotter pin out and get that nut off there. We're going to take these two bolts out of the strut. And then we should be able to lean this whole assembly here back towards me and uh, the axle should pop out hopefully without too much hesitation or resistance. Alright so I went ahead and got the hub nut removed as well as any associated hardware. There's like a couple washers and a little uh, retainer for the cotter pin. So I took all of that stuff off. And I took the uh, tie rod end out. Uh, whack it a couple times right here with a hammer and um, it came out. It's an 18 millimeter. It's probably also a cotter pin on it. And then I went ahead and took out the 21 millimeter bolts and nuts for the strut. And that's kind of where we're at. Doesn't look too much different. But now this whole suspension should pull towards me enough where I can push the axle back out of the wheel bearing. And then we can pull it out of the transmission. Also, I apologize for the sound of locusts. Took me a few videos to realize, but every time I film videos at my house, they uh, are relentless. They will not quiet down. So I do apologize for the background noise, and I also apologize that it is dark outside. It's kind of came out of nowhere on me, and didn't really plan on doing this today, but I figured since I am, might as well uh, film a video for you guys. So we're gonna go ahead, 
pull the suspension down like that. We're gonna tap the axle out a little bit, and then we're gonna try to pry it out of the transmission back there. Okay, so I was able to get the axle pulled out of the hub assembly just by kind of grabbing right here, pulling out, and kind of pushing down a little bit while you use your other hand to work it out. I tapped it a few times with a hammer and worked it through. This axle has been replaced before with a cheap crappy online uh, one that was cheap, so that's kind of why we're having these problems, I'm sure, but oh no, that thing definitely seems like it's done for, for sure. It's just loose and wobbly. I don't believe it is supposed to be that way. So let's get her out the rest of the way. All right, I was able to finally get the old one out by using a little bit of pry bar action from the bottom side. So now I'm gonna go ahead and go take a coffee break and we'll be right back. Do you need some new headlights for your vehicle? How about some turn signals? Some that are actually very bright. Click the link in the description below and check out Oxido LEDs. And if you use code Andy's Auto, you'll get 15% off your order. Now back to the video. All right, got some coffee. Went ahead and pushed the new axle in, making sure that the C-clip retainer was in all the way. As it's on the other side. There's a little clip on the end of it and that groove right there that needs to be fully seated. So if you guys are doing this job at home, make sure that you are making it uh, go all the way in or getting it fully seated. So now we're gonna go ahead and reverse that process and get everything tightened back up. And uh, probably gonna need an alignment or I'm gonna end up saying screw it and wait until the tires are starting to wear and Get new tires and an alignment again. I don't know. I'm fed up with this van, guys. I'll tell you what. I've replaced damn near everything you can think of at least once on this van. And it just keeps getting me trouble. I give these vans a lot of praise because of their reliability. But it seems like everything's taking a turn for the worst on me on this one, unfortunately. Maybe I only think it's reliable because I keep fixing mine. I know these engines are solid, 100%, but the transmissions, not so much. They're just, I don't know, man. Anyway, let's get back to work. All right, we got the two bolts back in for the strut. We got the tie rod reinstalled. We got the axle nut back in. And I didn't mention this, but I did go ahead and take the wiring out of these little uh, retainers here just to give it some slack. But I think we're pretty much all finished up with that. So now we're going to move on to the starter. All right, guys, we are down here at the starter. As you can see, we got a 13 millimeter that connects the B plus terminal. And then that small yellow wire for the S terminal just pulls right off. It's got one of those little spade terminal ends on it. And then, uh, so we're going to disconnect the battery first, of course. And then we're going to go ahead and remove both of those. And then, let me get flipped around here. There is another bolt right there. We have to take that off. And then you can barely see the other one up there. And it looks like it's got a ground cable connected to it. So we're going to get that one from under the hood and under the exhaust with a couple extensions. But for now, I'm going to get the battery disconnected, the starter electrical disconnected, and this lower bolt. All right, so I'm getting a little out of order here, but we got the battery disconnected. And as you can see, I got my ratchet going under the exhaust. And down there at the bolt, you can kind of see where my socket's touching it. So you can totally get in there just like that on it. And so I'm going to go ahead and do that real quick and then we'll get the bottom. I just want to mention that because it had been a little while since I did a starter on these. To be honest with you, the starter's been pretty reliable, but I think it's going to shit on me. 
and uh, anyway I saw a guy that was basically saying you had to take the fans out to get to that bolt and please don't do that any of you if you're doing this job and you're watching me definitely go ahead and just get the bolt that way I got a six inch extension and a shallow 13 on there and you should be able to fit on it just fine so once you get the nut off on top for the ground wire, behind that is the stud and it switches to a 15 millimeter. And this is the actual upper bolt for the starter. So I'm going to go ahead and put these two together so they don't get lost. And then we're going to go down to the bottom. Okay, so we've got the upper ground strap and upper bolt removed. We got the lower bolt removed. And I don't know if you guys can see, but we do have the uh, starter disconnected as well as far as the electrical goes. So we should be able to physically pull it out of the vehicle now. So I'm going to try to do that. All right, so we got the starter out. If you look really, really close, there is some very minor damage to the flywheel and also the same on the starter gears i kind of wiped it off honestly but i'm wondering if uh, that's part of the issue or not i'm hoping that the starter caused that and not an issue with the transmission or something but back in with the new one another thing i want to point out is that this starter has this little spacer on it so don't forget to put that back on when you're putting it back in there. It goes just like this if you're under the car looking at it from the middle here. All right, we got all the electrical for the starter reconnected. We got both of the bolts back in and tightened up. It was a little bit of a pain to get that spacer lined up like it always is. But otherwise, I'm going to go ahead and reconnect the battery. And we're going to take this thing for a test drive and hopefully it feels like it's less of a piece of junk. Well, we're all finished up here. We got her started up and I started it a couple times. Seems to be working. And whenever I put it in gear, it actually moves and it doesn't grind anymore. So that's good. Another thing I noticed is for a while now when I put it in park, and I uh, let my foot off the brake. It would roll forward or backward a lot more than it should, I think. And so either the axle was going bad and that was causing some extra movement potentially, or my transmission has an issue and that's what caused the axle to break in the first place. However, I'm definitely not putting a new transmission in this van again because I've done that once, been down that road already. So I'm going to ride with this transmission until it fails. Anyway, I know you can't see me. It's dark in the van. Well, there we go. It's, that's not very good either. <laughs> I definitely appreciate you guys hanging out with me tonight for these uh, late night mobile mechanic jobs at home. Uh, wasn't really motivated to uh, put money into this van at all or do these jobs. So I definitely appreciate you guys hanging out with me. Uh, making the videos on this kind of stuff definitely helps get me through the job. If you have not already, please like, comment, and subscribe. And I will see you next time.